You might be a quilter, but not all situations call for a quilt. You might need a fast and easy gift. You might want to show off a special block. And let's face it, not all people and occasions are quilt worthy. Today, it's all about pillows, the fast and easy ones, the use up your scraps and stash ones, and the personalized ones. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. And I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. When we start quilting, we are so excited to have something that we can give to those near and dear to us that will envelop them with love. But often, those same people mistake our enthusiasm with ease of construction. They don't see the time, effort, and money that you put out to make a quilt. And suddenly, you're getting requests to just whip up something for your sister's, boss's, daughter's graduation. Pillows are a wonderful alternative. They are not effortless, but they can be personalized so that they're gifts that people want to receive. First, we'll go through the construction, then what to put in the middle, and lastly, how to personalize it. At its simplest, the pillow is pretty darn easy. Decide on your finish size of pillow. You need a wide strip of fabric, one inch taller than your finish size of pillow and twice as wide, plus six to eight inches. So for an 18 inch pillow, you would need a strip 19 inches tall by 44 to 46 inches wide. This is a great place to use up the larger prints in your stash. Fold over the ends a quarter of an inch and press. Then fold it over again one inch and press again. And edge stitch along this fold. Use a template guide to get an even fold. I showed you how to make this in my 10 sewing hacks with template plastic. I'll leave a link down in the notes below. Turn your fabric over with the right sides up. From the middle of your strip, mark the finished size of your pillow. And from these marks, fold the left side into the middle then fold the right side into the middle. And then sew a half inch seam along the top and along the bottom. And turn it right side out. I reach in and grab the corners and then pull them through and then repeat with the other two. I use this special tool to poke out the corners. You can also use a cuticle stick or some pointy scissors and just slide it along the seam to the point and you're done. And it really was that easy. Now the first method I find is great for with the strip fabrics or you might have pieces left over from a quilt that you just strip all together and you make one long strip. Or in this example, I have a block and I've just added more fabric of the background to make the length of strip that I need. The next method is when you want to contrast the front of the pillow with the back. Take the fabric that's on the front of the pillow and cut a square one inch taller and one inch wider than the finished size of the pillow. For the fabric on the back, it is the same width as the piece on the front, and the height of this back fabric is half the height of the front plus three to four inches, and you cut two. So for this 18 inch pillow, the front piece would be 19 inches square, then you would have two 19 by 12 and a half to 13 and a half inch rectangles for the back. Next, we take the two back pieces, and just like in method one, we take a quarter of an inch, we fold it over and press, and then we fold over one inch, press, and then we edge stitch along that fold. Then we lay the front fabric down with the right side up. With right sides together, place one back piece on top, the fold side towards the center, and aligning the corners and sides. Then repeat with the second piece. Now you know I'm not a big pinner, but I find when you sew two squares together all at once that the top likes to shift. So I'm pinning in the corners, in the center, and along the sides. Stitch a half inch seam along all four sides of the block. And then clip all corners before inverting. A couple of extra steps, but still pretty darn easy. 
I use method two when I have fat quarters or when I want to contrast between the front and the back. I also use it when I want to show off a particular block. Last month, I took the Cityscapes workshop with Peter Byrne, and instead of making a mini quilt, I decided to turn it into a pillow. I gave you a range of cutting sizes. Which one is better? The smaller measurement gives you a two inch overlap and the larger measurement gives you a three inch overlap. Just know that the more the crossover that you have, the harder it will be to stuff the pillow inside. What happens if the pillow doesn't fit nicely and this overlap bulges? My friend Stephanie showed our guild last year just how easy it was to add these snaps to the back of your pillow to add a little bit of bling and a little bit of detail and deal with any unexpected bulges. So you can put binding on the edge, you can add tassels, you can add piping, but in general, I find it always best to keep it simple. The easiest way is to buy the pillows ready-made. I buy them three and four at a time from Amazon, so I always have them on hand. My favorite size is 18 inch, but I also make a 13 by 18 fairly often, and I'll leave a link to that down in the notes. Now, manufacturers recommend that you buy a pillow one inch larger than your finished pillow size, but I find that if I use unwashed fabrics, shrinkage will take care of that difference. The downside to using these pre-made is that the corners can be quite limp. So before you stuff your pillow, spend some time working the batting into those corners. Now I also will make my own pillows out of lightweight interfacing or muslin and my batting scraps. I talked about this in my video, what to do with your batting scraps. I cut two squares, one half inch larger than the finished size. I start four inches from the corner. I sew a quarter inch seam around the square, leaving an opening at the top. And then I turn it inside out. And stuff. You will be absolutely amazed at how many batting scraps you can use up inside a pillowcase. I use a piece of template either plastic or cardboard, to keep the opening firm and open. Take a moment to get those scraps into the corners. When it's as full as you want to be, hand sew it closed. This is a great method for those odd size pillows. It does give a slightly lumpy feel, but if that bothers you, when you make the shell, you incorporate two large batting sheets and that will lessen that. On the plus side, this pillow is heavier and more cuddly, and it's the one that my family always buys for. Now you can also fill them with other things like buckwheat, rice, beans, wool rovings. But before I talk about personalization, let me tell you about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning and empowers you to learn those skills that you've always wanted to try. This month, I found an amazing course on how to design a fabric line from design to how to design the repeats and how to design coordinating fabrics. I learned so much about process and actual techniques within Illustrator. And it's so amazing how designers come up with all these fabrics that we use every day in our quilt. There's so much to explore and real projects to create with the support of fellow creatives. Look at the amazing designs that other people who have taken this same course have made. Turn this time into an opportunity to explore new skills and deepen existing passions. Take a look at the Skillshare class list. I'm always finding new and different subjects which inspire me. Perhaps this is a month that you want to trigger that creative voice, play with new textures, and learn about pattern. Skillshare is incredibly affordable, especially when compared to in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. When life returns to normal, these are classes that will fit into your life. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit into the short blocks of time in your busy day. Whether you watch on your morning commute, your lunch hour, or in the waiting room, you can move forward in your creative journey without putting your life on hold. The first thousand people to click on the link below will receive two months free membership to Skillshare Premium. So now let's make these pillows personalized. I'm a huge advocate for giving gifts 
that people want to receive and can use. Matching a current holiday is a good one. Or an important theme. Use birthstones. Use cityscapes or landmarks. Flags are very popular. It's such a favorite hostess gift. I actually kit this one up so I have them ready to go when I need them. Pillows made from the clothing of a loved one can bring an awful lot of comfort. As can words of wisdom. You can use old t-shirts. Just note that any design or words need to be centered just above the center point on your pillow, as the bottom part of the pillow most likely won't be visible. A pillow with a pocket for storing a book or pajamas is also another favorite. But don't be confined to the same old stuffing. This envelope technique is great for other items. Here's a long thin one that I stuffed with buckwheat and I put this at the bottom of my door. It blocks out light, it blocks out drafts, and it blocks out noise. Filling a square or a rectangle with rice to make a heat pad. Just pop it in the microwave for two minutes and it's a great item. Or use plush toy beads to make a travel pillow. And with a slight change in construction, you can make a tetrahedron. I filled this one with buckwheat as well. This makes a great doorstop and it makes a great counterweight on my tripod. And a great rest for my iPhone or iPad. One of my very first videos was about making this soccer ball. It doesn't use the envelope technique, but I've got some sentimental attachment. And lastly, in a small size, you can fill it with wool roving. This is a favorite pincushion my aunt gave me. The oil in the wool will keep your pins and needles nice and smooth. And of course, you can do beanbag games, but I ran out of time making those. I'm sure you can think up other great uses. I hope you can use some of these ideas when giving the gift of a quilt is not the best answer. I'll have a link in the notes below to all the videos I referenced. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilt. And of course, my website, JustGetItDoneQuilt.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.